I didn't have a panic attack, but I just complete. I just left the room. Like I just left my body. I was like, what is going on? I thought you were going to tell me that I was perfectly fine and healthy, and you're telling me. Hello, angels, and welcome back to the Glucose Goddess Show. My name is Jessie Inchespe, your favorite. French biochemist. I think I can say that. So listen, today I wanted to do a sort of special episode. Um, I wanted to talk about something personal that happened to me in case it's of interest, in case it helps you in your health journey. So about a year and a half ago, um, I decided to have a full body MRI scan. And the reason I wanted to do this was just to make sure that there was no early cancer in my body. I just felt like it could be a cool way to have peace of mind because um, so many people around me are getting these diseases younger and younger. So anyway, I went to one of those companies that do full body MRI scans and let me tell you, uh, the results were really not what I had expected. Uh, it was kind of crazy. So first of all, how do MRI machines work? They're basically massive machines that look inside of your body uh, using magnets and radio waves. They're pretty cool. So I was sitting, I was laying in this MRI machine, laying down, uh, watching a documentary at the same time. And this is what was going on around my body to be able to see inside of it. First of all, an MRI is just a big, big magnet. If you compare it to like a fridge magnet, it's about 5,000 times stronger. And importantly, a fridge magnet, you cannot turn on and off, but a big MRI magnet, you can. And listen, these magnets are so powerful that if you were laying in an MRI machine with, let's say, your phone in your pocket, the phone would fly up to the machine really, really quickly because the magnet is so powerful that anything metallic around it, it will attract in a nanosecond. And your body is made up of trillions of atoms. And a lot of these atoms are hydrogen atoms. And once you get inside the big MRI magnet, the magnet actually makes all of these hydrogen atoms align in the same direction. This is not at all dangerous. It's totally benign. You don't feel it. It has no consequences inside your body, but that big magnet is aligning all of the atoms to point towards the same direction. And once the hydrogen atoms are all lined up, the MRI machine then sends a radio wave through your body. I know it's crazy. A radio wave through your body that sort of gently nudges the atoms to fall out of alignment. And then they realign gently. And as they realign, the MRI is listening for echoes. It can sense the realignments of these atoms as they get back into position. And that is what the MRI machine detects. And different tissues, like organs or bones or muscles, give off different echoes. So the machine is going to then look at all of the echoes and using them is going to be able to recreate a picture of inside your body. It's a very cool technology and it's not harmful like x-rays, for example. It really has no, consequ no consequences on your health, which is why I was so excited to try it. Anyway, so I was in this MRI machine um, watching a documentary. I think I watched, because they asked me what I wanted to watch. I think I wanted to watch like the Victoria's Secret documentary. Anyway, don't judge me. But so I was laying in this machine and I was having a great time. I was like, oh, for sure, I'm super healthy, no worries. And then a few weeks later, I get a phone call from the doctors at the company. And you guys know I've been doing my glucose hacks religiously. They are the foundation of my dietary habits, but adding the molecules and anti-spike has really allowed me to get to the next level in a few areas. One, bloating. I didn't even know that I would get bloated. With anti-spike, I'm like, oh, I used to get bloated. I feel so much better now. Two, energy levels, super consistent. Eagle energy all day. And three, cravings for sugar. I love sugar. I want to eat chocolate all the time. And anti-spike has given me a feeling of having a total superpower when it comes to my sugar cravings. I don't feel controlled by them anymore at all. It's truly amazing. And I know that these natural molecules are going to help my long-term fasting glucose and fasting insulin levels, which is so key to physical and mental health and to healthy aging. So go to antispike.com to see all the science behind these ingredients, to see testimonials from thousands of people who've tried it, and to order your own antispike formula bottle and try it for yourself. So first of all, this is the first image they showed me. That's an image of my brain. 
in the MRI machine. And as you can see around my teeth area, it's like all dark and black like a cloud. That's because I have a retainer in the back of my teeth. It stays in there forever. And that retainer actually messes up the MRI signal. So any metal in the machine is gonna cause this kind of shadow. But anyway, so this is my brain, this is my face, yep. But this is where things got pretty scary. So the doctor then told me, oh, we found something really interesting. I was like, oh, cool, interesting, that sounds good. He said, we found an aneurysm in your brain. Um, cue all of my blood leaving my body. I was in such a state of shock. I was like, an aneurysm? The only thing I had heard about aneurysms is that they kill people. So when the doctor said we found a four millimeter aneurysm in your left internal carotid artery, basically right behind your eyes, um, I was very shocked. I was terrified. It was really, really scary news. Um, seriously, I was... I didn't have a panic attack, but I just complete. I just left the room. Like I just left my body. I was like, "What is going on?" I thought you were going to tell me that I was perfectly fine and healthy, and you're telling me there's an aneurysm in my brain. Does that mean I'm going to die? Does that mean I'm going to have a stroke? Is this dangerous? Can we do anything about it? All these questions were floating around, but I was very, very, very scared. It was it was super scary. Um, here's an image of it. So you can see it. So this is the little aneurysm that they found. So it's quite small, four millimeters wide. But again, to me, you know, a 30 year old healthy person, I never thought they would find anything. So that was a cold shower for sure. So first things first, if you do an MRI scan, you know, be prepared. Hopefully you won't find anything, but be prepared for something to come up. Um, don't be like me, naive, thinking I'd be completely fine. Be prepared. I can also show you this video of it. I don't know if you can make out where it is. Um, I'll point to it with an arrow. But basically these are the blood vessels in the middle of my brain. And one of them has this little aneurysm on it. Hello, little aneurysm. Um, but honestly, guys, like I was almost fully passing out from the stress. I remember I was sitting on a couch and the doctor was talking on the phone and saying like, yeah, so we found this aneurysm. Oh, and then let's move on to your metabolism. I was like, what's going on? Oh, and he also said, oh, this is good. Finding an aneurysm is like Christmas for a doctor. I was like, what do you mean it's like Christmas? I'm fully having an anxiety attack and you tell me it's like Christmas. That was a very weird experience. But he said, yeah, no, we love to find these things because uh, they're usually benign. And if you can monitor them, you know, it can be helpful for you to prevent any further issues. So anyway, I'll get back to the science in a sec, but just on a personal note, it was, um, it was rough. It was very, very rough. I was stressed for many, many months after this as I worked through the follow-up care and what I needed to do about it. And I thought, and then I researched and I realized I wasn't exactly the case, but I thought, okay, there's something in my brain right now that could rupture at any moment. An aneurysm is essentially a little malformation on one of your blood vessels, okay? And this little malformation, this little bulge, this is abnormal. And the reason that aneurysms are dangerous is because this little bulge could actually rupture it makes your blood vessel weaker. It's a little malformation. And if it ruptures, then you have bleeding in your brain. And then that can be very, very bad. You can die from it. You can have lifelong consequences. You can lose parts of your brain. I mean, it can get very, very bad. So an aneurysm is just a little malformation. And um, this is what a normal blood vessel looks like. And so when you compare that to an aneurysm, you can see that little bulge is that little malformation. But then as I calmed down a little bit and started looking into the research, I realized that unruptured aneurysms, so what I have, which is just an aneurysm that hasn't actually ruptured and bled, are actually really, really common. About one in every 30 people in the world, so about 3% of the population, has an unruptured aneurysm. And most people will never find out because most people are not gonna do a full body MRI. So it's possible that you have one and you might never know. I don't wanna freak you out, but they're actually more common than I thought. 
And the big difference, again, is if your aneurysm never ruptures, you won't ever have any issues. But if it does rupture, then that's where the problems start. And so if 3% of people have an unruptured aneurysm, only 0.001% of people will ever have a ruptured aneurysm. Okay, that should be reassuring. At least it was reassuring to me, but I was still like, well, what the heck, is my aneurysm bad? You know, is it big? Is it small? Is it risky? How long has it been there? I had so, so many questions. And 85% of all unruptured aneurysms are in the circle of Willis. The circle of Willis is just a set of blood vessels in the center of your brain, and this is exactly where mine is. Okay, so with this information, um, and having, having sort of slightly processed the freak out, I felt like I needed to do some follow-up care. So I started calling around to see, you know, which of my friends knew anybody who was specialized in brains and aneurysms and stuff like that. And I found a specialist, um, so I went to see him, and I showed him my MRI results, and his first reaction was like, why did you do a full body MRI? He kind of looked at me like if I was crazy. Uh, but then he explained that the next step would be to do what's called an angiogram. Again, this was very stressful. Basically, an angiogram is a way to get a more precise image of your aneurysm, because an MRI is not that precise. And the way they do angiograms, um, if you're sensitive to like blood and stuff, you might want to skip this part. So they had to insert a little catheter in my wrist. This little catheter would go up, they would push it up all the way to my brain, and then they would release a dye very briefly in my brain, and then take an x-ray at the same exact time. So I had to do that. So that's what they did. And this photo is what they got from my brain, which is actually kind of a cool and very detailed photo, as you can see. It's much more detailed than, than the MRI. And the good news is they told me that my aneurysm was small enough and benign enough that it would actually be better to just leave it there instead of trying to what's called embolize it. So embolizing would mean putting a little coil where the aneurysm is to sort of block it off. And they would say the risk of that surgery is greater than the risk of this aneurysm ever rupturing. So yeah, about four months after my MRI results, I had this result. Um, I felt better. I felt still nervous. I think I felt better a year later when I had this follow-up uh, MRI to just check that it hadn't grown. It hadn't grown, which was nice. But um, overall, quite stressful experience, I have to say. And to be honest, the conclusion for me of this experience, I'm not sure if I'm happy that I know. I'm not sure. Maybe I would have preferred to not know because the stress that this incident caused was uh, very difficult to move through. It was very stressful to feel like I had this thing in my brain that I didn't fully understand that could rupture any moment and basically kill me. It was tough, but now I do know one thing, and I think this is something that we should all take home from this experience, is that the first symptom of a ruptured aneurysm is a very, very, very bad and intense headache. So I know now this is one thing that is going to follow me for the rest of my life. If all of a sudden I have a very, 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 very bad headache, like the worst headache I've ever had in my life, I need to rush to the ER. That is the conclusion that I took from this experience. So yeah, there you have it. I wanted to share this in case it's helpful. And I'm super curious, would you want to know or would you not want to know? Tell me, please, in the comments. I want to know how you feel. Um, but I'm still not really sure, honestly. Okay, I'll see you next time, guys. Lots of love.